Praise God, if you have your Bibles, and uh, we'll turn to the book of Acts. Uh, I believe we are still on the series, How to be Led by the Spirit of God. We have talked about the inward witness and how we could follow our inward witness. And uh, we are now talking about the voice of the Holy Spirit. And there are certain things that we have not covered yet on the voice of the Holy Spirit. And this morning we want to talk about the audible voice of the Holy Spirit. The audible voice of the Holy Spirit. We have spoken about some of the inaudible voice of the Holy Spirit. What it's like, etc. And uh, so this morning we want to talk about the audible voice of the Holy Spirit and uh, all that is involved. And uh, in the book of Acts we have an incident that we'll look at. We'll bring certain incidences together and uh, it will include some passages on John, some from 1 Samuel, to see the audible voice of God. Because God does speak audibly. But when we talk about audible, it is more or less a spiritual voice that has a, an, a side effect on the natural sound waves or, or producing certain natural sound waves in the natural Sometimes discernible, sometimes undiscernible. But the person who hears the audible voice of God, although God does not speak uh, audibly uh, many times, please understand that we are touching on the 5% area of the normal way the Spirit operates. 95% of the time, the Holy Spirit speaks through the inward witness and the inward voice of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the other 5% are what we call the spectacular. All 100% are supernatural, but some supernatural things are not quite that spectacular. Like for example, when we speak in tongues and we just come before God and say, Praise God. That is supernatural, but it's not quite so spectacular. Not quite so spectacular. But it's still supernatural. Speaking in tongues is supernatural. And in the same manner, uh, we see that uh, uh, there are some things that are very spectacular. Audible voice is very spectacular. I mean, it's not every day that God will speak with His audible voice, with the lightning flashing, the thunder rolling, the earth shaking, angels singing, and the booming voice of God comes down and says, Thus say uh, the Lord of hosts. Praise God. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, that says the Lord God Almighty. It's not every day. But yet, the audible voice can be heard but not understood. That's an amazing thing if you understand that the audible voice of God uh, can occur. In other words, uh, there is a spiritual uh, vibration uh, caused by the spiritual voice speaking and it affects and has a side effect on a natural realm and uh, there's some natural noises that are heard and some people can hear it and not understand it some can hear it and think it's something else it doesn't occur every day so don't after this teaching uh, go out and uh, somewhere in the forest in the Malaysian forest and you hear a sound like Hey, audible voice of God, <laughs> right? Uh, because what we're going to touch on, we're going to realize that there are some things that may be God ministering and speaking that we miss out. Anyway, let's quickly get to some scriptures in the book of Acts chapter 9. Book of Acts chapter 9. Anyway, the crew, crew is probably a clang crow. <laughs> It won't be the audible voice of God. Right? Acts chapter 9. So, Acts chapter 9, we have uh, uh, Paul, the apost- Paul, who was not an apostle yet, but called him an apostle. On his way to Damascus, he was sitting on his uh, donkey or horse. And uh, as he was sitting on his donkey or horse, uh, going to persecute the Christians, the power of God shone upon him. Jesus Christ looked down from His throne of glory. Now, Jesus didn't come to this planet Earth. Jesus looked down from His throne of glory. And uh, from this, His great glories in heaven, Jesus wanted to speak to Paul something uh, to Him. And so the angels opened the windows in heaven. 
and uh, Jesus peeped out through the windows in heaven and said, So, so, and, and just that little, little opening was so great that Paul fell off his donkey. That's the glory of God. Some of us are saying, Lord, send thy glory. Sometimes we know it not what we ask it. <laughs> God, send thy glory. I mean, that was just a, a little bit of God's glory. And that was Paul thrown, thrown from his horse. And uh, while he was down on the floor, he heard the voice of God speaking. The voice of the Lord Jesus through the mediation, of course, of the Holy Spirit, who was the channel or telephone line. And uh, he heard the voice of the Lord saying, Saul, Saul, why dost thou, thou persecutest me? heard the voice of God. And then uh, Paul said, uh, Who are you, Lord? Lord says, I am Jesus. I mean, that, that was frightening for him. He was against Jesus. He was after Jesus' disciples. And here Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And then Jesus began to speak to him about his life, about his ministry. We believe that Saul was born again at the same time. How do we know he was born again? Number one, when he addressed the Lord, he called him Lord. Number two, the Lord Jesus Christ commissioned him to the ministry. In Acts chapter 26, uh, Paul was sharing his testimony and he said how Jesus Christ sent him to be a witness. Jesus said that uh, he has called him to be a minister and uh, unto the Gentiles to whom now he sends him. Now Jesus will never send an unbeliever. So obviously something has happened. Paul was now born again. At that very instant when he met Jesus there was that glory that came and he responded and there was this uh, born again experience, a mystery of God. That's the second reason. The third reason why we believe that he is born again is that when Ananias came to see Saul and he was in Damascus waiting at a certain place and uh, when Ananias came, he, he saw uh, Saul and he said, Brother Saul! It's God. You wouldn't normally call a person a brother in the New Testament unless they're born again. Obviously, he has been a reborn again. But as he heard this audible voice of God, remember there were other people with Saul. There were his companions who were traveling with him. And on the way there, when God spoke to him, something happened to his companions. Look at the book of Acts chapter 9. Tells us here. Verse 7. The men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. They heard a voice. But they saw no one. Now that is insufficient for teaching. We need Acts chapter 24. In order to give more background. Before we can draw some principles from that. In Acts chapter 24, Paul in sharing his testimony... In Acts, excuse me, 22, he says in verse uh, 7, Acts 22, verse 7, And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, Balan, Balan, Indrasha, Indrasha. Isn't it interesting God knows you by your personal name? Saul, Saul, he says, Moses, Moses, Samuel, Samuel. Hey, you God, sometimes sounds like your mother. Always calls you twice. 
So, so, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with you indeed saw the light and were afraid. Now those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid. So there's something more. They also saw the light. Uh, incidentally, it was about midday, 12 noon, when the sun was right at its peak. And uh, yet there was a greater light that shined down upon them. But the next phrase is interesting when you compare it to Acts 9. It says in verse uh, 9, But they, that is those who were with Paul, did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. Isn't it funny? In Acts 9, it said they heard the voice. In Acts 22, it says they did not hear the voice. Look carefully, it's in your Bible. In uh, Acts 9, it says, let me read that verse again in case you have forgotten it. Acts 9, verse 7, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. However, Acts 22 told us, tells us that they, they saw light. There it is. They saw no one. But they heard a voice in verse 7. And in chapter 22, it says in verse 9, they did not hear the voice. Does the Bible contradict itself? No. Never. God forbid. Every time you think there is a contradiction, it is more because there is a revelation. And when you find a revelation involved to harmonize the seemingly outwardly contradictory scriptures, you will find a revelation that links it. So the scriptures do not contradict at all. It's just like in the scripture, you will find that in some scriptures, it tells us that uh, Judas went and hanged himself, as in the Gospels. Then in the book of Acts chapter 1, it tells us that Judas fell down and his bubbles gushed out, uh, gushed out and he died. question is, how did Judas die? Sometimes when you witness the people, they say, how did Judas die? Say, I mean, how Judas died is not concerned with you right now. It's how you're going to die that is more important. <laughs> and then when you witness to some people, they tell you, you know, where did Cain get his wife? And then, where did Cain get his wife is another question, but where are you going to get your life? Right now. <laughs> it's a more important question. And then we'll settle the other question later. Praise God. When you're right there on the brink of eternity, you're about to die off, not knowing what will happen in eternity, and you're asking, you know, where did King get his wife? <laughs> I mean, get saved first, then find out why <laughs> or where. And uh, so here is a seeming contradiction, but that's not. Incidentally, King got his wife uh, from one of the descendants of, uh, of, of Adam, uh, because uh, in those days in the Bible, when the Bible is silent, it does not mean there's nothing happening. None of the daughters of Adam were recorded. Right? And in those times past, even though one or two chapters, it sometimes mean, you know, about 100 years or so sometimes. Or 200. So, well, they answer the other question. And uh, as far as uh, Judas was concerned, some bright Alex says that when he hanged himself, the rope was a bit thin. It broke and he fell down on his stomach because he possibly was he's, he's, uh, possibly heavier on that part. And there was a sharp rock that was right under where he was hanging and a piercing cut him and his bowels burst out. <laughs> Sounds good. But uh, if you study the Bible language, the word hang, when and hang was and translated as hang and hang, is actually in the infinitive tense. They should have put a word to there. He went to hang. So possibly it never happened at all. He went to hang himself. 
and uh, putting the incidences together as he was there in a hurry, taking the hang himself in remorse and in, in guilt feelings, all these things, with ropes all over the place and he get tripped over through a rope and he fell off and uh, there were sharp rocks all over the place and he burst out and he died. <laughs> he went to hang. He did not hang himself yet, uh, possibly. Anyway, that's another uh, possibility. Now here is where Acts 9 says they heard the voice. Acts 22 tells us they did not hear the voice. In the Greek, there was a, there's an interesting uh, ending to the word phone, which is the word voice, uh, and to the word hear, more to the word hear. Akuo is the Greek word for the word hear. And what happened is that they use a, a, a special ending in the word akuo here in X9 to mean they heard something without understanding. They heard something but they did not understand the something. And you tie it back with Acts chapter 22, where it says they did not hear the voice. In other words, they did not discern the voice and what he was speaking. You know what speaking very fast? You wouldn't understand what I'm speaking, right? You will only hear, that's all. You will not understand what I'm speaking. You could hear a sound without discerning what it means. It could be the vo- a voice that is speaking in discernible language, but you did not hear the language, the 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 inflection and the and all the uh, enunciation of the language in proper sounds and syllables, and therefore you could not comprehend and understand it. All you hear is something else. The audible voice of Jesus. They saw the light of Jesus and they heard the audible voice of Jesus. The audible voice of Jesus just sounded like a sound to them. Whatever it was. And uh, they, are, they just heard sounds and, and they heard, of course, Paul's conversation. The other side. All they hear is this. There comes, there they were on the way to Damascus Road. Let's replay the whole scene. So on the way there, there goes the apostle, uh, he is not an apostle yet, Saul. And uh, with all his uh, companions, right? Probably three, to make it three stooges. (laughs) And uh, so there they go. And uh, possibly more than that, right? I'm not not, not nominating a number. And there they go on their donkey. And they go, suddenly go, and then then, then, Light comes down, and uh, Paul falls off his horse, <laughs> and uh, then the rest of them also fell off. <laughs> and uh, there they are lying on the floor, and uh, the light is shining on them, and uh, there is Paul, and suddenly they hear <laughs> or something, <laughs> and uh, then Paul said, "Who are you, Lord?" And uh, that's all they hear. And they just hear Paul talking from Paul's side. They never heard the voice in a true sense. They did not discern the meanings. Or they may not even have known that it was somebody talking. Now that is not the first time that such a thing occurred. In the book of John chapter 12, let's look at the book of John chapter 12. In a different incident, this time in the life of Jesus, John chapter 12, in verse 28, Jesus prayed, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, now there's a voice. It's probably the, it's the Father's voice. I have glorified it. Right? Possibly God the Father has a very busy voice. <laughs> Certainly won't be. I have glorified it. 
Mm. But some people may hear that way by no, uh, and not in the voice, but they may hear just sounds. Uh, here it goes. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. And the people, uh, there are people standing by. There are people who stood by and heard it said it thundered. They say it thundered. They didn't hear any any voice. They only heard a thunder. Now there were different people. There were the disciples there. There were some of the unbelievers there. There were some of the onlookers there. There were the Sadducees there. There were the Pharisees there. And there were the wooden seas there. Who wouldn't see anything. And... Uh, so all these people were there. Some of them heard when the voice said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Some heard it as, Kaboom! Hey, thunder. That's all they heard. They only heard a thunder. They just heard some sounds. And they possibly wouldn't even know that there was a voice speaking. Then some of them heard some sort of words, possibly. And this was the other statement some of them made. It says, An angel has spoken to him. Now some heard some words here and there. Possibly they could be a whole sentence or what, we do not know. They may have heard, I have Hey, the angels talking. They may have heard something more. But apparently Jesus and possibly His disciples, that's how they could record this, heard the actual voice. Saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Now, that seems strange to us because it's the same voice. How can different people hear it differently? Right? Right now, all of you are hearing me. I'm sure none of you are hearing some thunders right now. As I'm speaking, let's say to Brother Chelaya, right? The Brother Chelaya, and some of you hearing, bram, bram, bram. That is very unlikely to happen in the natural. The audible voice of God is still a spiritual voice. Because it's still a spiritual voice, depending on the spiritual condition or state of the hearer, they may not even be able to discern it, even though it's audible. Some people think that the audible voice will always be able, you always be able to pick it up and discern it with the natural earrings, the eardrums, the inner ear, and a little hammer inside vibrating exactly to hear everything. No, there still need to be a spiritual state of condition to hear and perceive it. If God were to right now speak audibly to the whole church and we were to hear the voice of God loudly speaking, proclaiming from His throne of glory, saying, Glorify Me! Some of us would still not hear it. That's a surprising thing. Although it's called the audible voice of God, it's still a spiritual voice that needs spiritual discernment. Spiritual perception. Spiritual position to hear that voice. Otherwise, we may just say, it thundered. And then somebody else will say, who said it thundered? I heard that voice say, glorify me. And then they get into the argument, no, it thundered, no, the voice. And we think, your imagination, la. It still takes faith, even though it could be the audible voice. Some of us are wishing for the audible voice and we don't need faith anymore. No, sir. You still need faith. Because there will still be those who cannot hear the audible voice. He say, my God, is that true? Yes. 
if we are not in a spiritual position, even the audible voice will be mumbled up. We could not discern it either. We will just say, it thundered. Or something else. And we will still say that there are those who heard that voice that they were probably imagining. It's only a thunder. I don't think that it is. You think that it's just a figment of their imagination. That's not true. The Bible records there's actual voice for speaking to Jesus. And there are there is an actual voice of God that was speaking, the voice of the Lord Jesus, that was speaking to the Apostle Paul. Uh, he was Saul at that time. And uh, the rest didn't hear him. They didn't discern the voice. He says they did not hear the voice. What a strange occurrence in the audible voice. We begin to see here that uh, spiritual principles involved, we have established that, is that the spiritual audible voice of God can only be discerned based on our spiritual pos- position. Sometimes I need certain preparations to hear it. And that's where we want to see what are the conditions before we could... We don't only want to hear. If really God speaks in an audible voice, we want to hear it definitely. But we don't want just to hear it. We want to understand what we hear. We want to discern. We don't want to hear it just as rumblings or thunderings. We want to hear it, no doubt. But we want to understand, to hear with understanding, to discern that voice. That's the second thing we want. And uh, of course, we, we want to be able to receive the impartation that that voice is bringing forth. Remember, this is not the common way that God speaks. But He may, and He does from time to time. He can speak in signs. When William Branham was uh, ministering at a certain place and he was uh, being baptized, there was a voice that came as he came out from the water. William Branham. An angel spoke. And people saw a huge cloud that was in the figure of the Lord Jesus. And even the natural meteorology say it's a phenomenal cloud, unheard and unseen before. But the same thing is interesting in that somebody else who sees the same natural phenomena cannot see the spiritual in it. Even though they could be looking at the exact thing, they could not see the spiritual in it. Neither could they even hear the spiritual in it. That's the strange thing. For the audible voice of God is still in the spiritual realm. It only has what I call side effect in the natural world. When Elijah was on the mountain... Bible tells us that he heard that still small voice. And when we read that scripture in 1 Kings chapter 19, we think that if we were there, we could hear it. Not necessarily so. If some of us were there, we may just hear. That's all we may hear. To hear it depends on our spiritual condition. Well, let's turn to that in 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. In verse 11, Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountains before the Lord. And behold, 
The Lord passed by. I tell you, the Lord, the Lord passed by with side effects. He can pass by without side effect. He can pass by with side effects. That must be a great measure of His presence. And a great strong wind tore into the mountains, broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still small voice. Four things. And mind you, there was a lot of noise up there, although there's nobody else but Elijah. It was noisy. He said, brother, how do you know it was noisy? He says there was a great strong wind. Strong winds are not silent. Silent night, holy night. And we go. And suddenly your house falls down. Boom! No! Strong winds are noisy. If you ever sat under a tree, especially some certain types of tree, when a strong wind is blowing, and uh, like a, a, a fir tree or etc., and the tree and the wind blows through the, the, the tree, it sounds something like people talking. It goes, Ooh. Have you heard that, that voice? One, one time, I, long, long ago, I was in uh, Langkawi, and I sat near where the place was, where the, where the sand was black, you know, there was a certain part, and uh, um, call it a black sand, and I'm just sitting there, and I uh, see I'm meditating, and uh, the wind was blowing, and they planted the fir trees there, and it blew, and it sounded like, sound like a ghost. It goes, when the wind blows, it, go, it doesn't go, just like that. And, and we could know that it's, it's some sort of wind. Like it go, sounds like, Puntiana! Puntiana! <laughs> Which means, for the, our Western friends, goes. <laughs> and uh, some sign there. Imagine if there was somebody camping there who doesn't know a natural phenomena. Now, there are some natural sounds that sound like people speaking, and there are some spiritual sounds that sound like noise to the natural. If somebody was camping there who doesn't know the effect, and, uh, and there was uh, these uh, friends who were there, and uh, when I heard the sound, because I, I, ne- I never heard such a wind blowing, and they had to say, Oh, that's a normal phenomena, you know, when it happens, you know. And uh, just in case I was going to say, Come out in Jesus' name! <laughs> and, uh, but there's a, it is a national, natural phenomena. And uh, just like if you are in a graveyard at midnight and you're not really strong in the Lord, I can assure you there are some natural sounds you hear which you think is something else, which we won't mention, for the benefit of some of you. <laughs> right? It could be, there's a pussycat, they go, and you'll think that uh, it's something else. And uh, so there was this strong wind, and it blew through the place. Go, Why was it so strong? It broke the rocks. So the rocks were falling, the wind was howling, and then the earth was quaking. (laughs) And earthquakes are noisy. Boom! The wind was howling. The rocks were falling. The earth was quaking. And there was this still small small voice that goes, I mean, it takes great spiritual discernment to know that it's not pussy kid. They got lost in the mountain. Elijah heard that still small voice. Now I want you to notice something here in 1 Kings 19. When he first heard it, he didn't listen the voice yet. Look at it. When he first heard it, there is no record that he discerned a voice. He was in a cave still. And there was a lot of noise happening. 
and he heard this noise. All this, in spite of all this noise, he heard a noise that was not just natural. Still small. There's not necessarily any voice. There may be, I won't be dogmatic about that, but there's no record. And God apparently didn't speak to him at all yet. Until he walked out to respond to that voice. So he must have heard some sound that he could discern. Although he could not discern what it was yet. Bible tells us in 1 Kings chapter 19, in verse 13, when Elijah heard it, he called the voice an it. Because there was no sort of human words that were recorded that were heard. He wrapped his face in his mantle because the winds were blowing, the rocks were falling, and the earth was quaking. And went out, see he has to move out of the cave. And when he was out the cave and he stood at the entrance of the cave, then look at verse, the next line, and suddenly, and suddenly, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Do you notice there was a difference between the still small voice and suddenly a voice came to him? Because there were two parts to that voice. In the first part, there was a sound, but he could not discern the words. Yet, in spite of all the noise, while the wind was howling and the uh, earth was quaking and the rocks were falling, and added to that, the fire was burning. And fires, when they burn, there is a crackling sound. He heard an exceptional voice that he knew. Hey, this is God's voice trying to tell me something. Now, some of us in the natural experience that maybe your loved one or your children or somebody is quite far away. And you, and you hear, and you say, hey, uh, are you calling me? See, we are not sure. We hear the sounds, we recognize the sound, but we don't discern the voice. And we have to pay our attention and go near. It's, and uh, then you say, uh, uh, are you calling me? Are you calling me? This must be your favorite seat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And... Uh, Praise God. And he said, are you talking, were you talking to me just now? See, you're not sure because you heard some sounds, but you're not sure whether it's the, the person speaking or not. It sounds like the person, but you're not sure. Sometimes over the phone, when the lines get very weak, you hear the fellow talking, he say, holy, holy, you're, you're too soft. Uh, uh, can you speak louder? You hear sounds, but you don't descend the voice. And apparently there are two stages to that voice. The first part, he heard a still, small voice. I don't know what it sounded to, to Elijah. Why it may have been... And he may hear, Elijah, Elijah, whatever. But he knew that's God's voice. That's fantastic. Wind was howling. Earth was quaking, rocks was falling, fires were burning, and he heard this sound of all the sound. He knew this is the one. And only when he moved out, he wrapped himself in his mantle, he went out to the entrance of the cave as he stood there. Then that voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Then only the voice spoke. That's an interesting phenomenon as we look at the audible voice of God. That uh, God can speak audibly and there are some side effects in the natural. It does not mean when God speaks audibly, we will naturally hear it. Doesn't mean that. So what are the conditions that we have to meet in order to be up in a place to hear God's voice and understand it? Should He choose to speak audibly? There are conditions that we have to meet. They are found in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse 
Paul chapter 3. He says there, in verse 2 and 3, chapter 3, verse 2 and 3, It came to pass at that time when Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see it, and before the Lamb of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. He went and lay down, and the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. And Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. Then he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Now here is the Lord calling Samuel. And in verse 10 it says, The Lord called, came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Now this is in the middle of the night. Samuel was, was sleeping. And he had never heard the audible voice of God yet. He had never heard God's audible voice. And here he heard God audibly calling him. Samuel, Samuel. Now he could hear his name, but there was a little bit of muddling here. He heard the voice as if it was Eli's voice. We all are experienced enough if we know a person to know a voice. Sometimes people's voice do sound like each other, but generally each one has a particular voice. Right? Can you say, hello? Hello. Can you say, hello? Right? Can you say, hello? Hello. Right? Different. Everybody has a different voice. Right? Some of our voices are very low. Low. Some are very fierce. Hello. Some are very gentle. Hello. Right? And sometimes, uh, as we know a person, we recognize their voice. The interesting thing is that when you hear the audible voice of God, you may hear it as if it was somebody else's voice. As if it was a natural sound. Like Elijah, he hear an undiscernible sound. Or you may hear, say, it thundered. It's interesting that they associate the voice to thunder. That means it must have really sounded in a natural to them like thunder. It thundered, they say, in John chapter 12. So the audible voice of God can, does, sound, does sound a lot like some natural sounds within the circumference of our experience. That's interesting. It sounds like sounds that we have heard in the circumference of our experience. And we need to discern that when God does, if He so chooses, although it's only a very few times if I would do it, He speaks speak to us. Sometimes I heard the inner voice of God sound like an audible voice of God. Sounds quite loud and you thought everybody else heard it. Yet we need to know that, as you see in number one here, Samuel heard it And he thought that it was Eli. He must be so convinced to come to him three times. Remember, all the other of Eli's sons were also there. Why of so many people staying in that place, did they associate associate with Eli's voice? Because it sounded like Eli's voice. It must have sounded like Eli's voice. They were Eli's sons. They were there. See, the, this is an interesting thing I found. The audible voice of God, when you actually hear it, sounds like somebody else's voice you know, to a certain extent. And it can sound like some natural sounds you have heard. It's just like when God uh, brings to your mind scriptures. The scriptures he brings to you and when God speaks to you is within the circumference of your experience and vocabulary. 
For example, God could say through a little teenage girl in prophecy and says, Thus says the Lord, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am with you. And the same message could be delivered by a doctor of philosophy. And he says, God is saying, God is saying, have no phobias. Have no phobias in any realm. Same message, but delivered according to the vocabulary of the person. To a certain extent, there will be some supernatural involvement. But I, I will gather that if you have very poor English, and when you speak, you probably still have very poor English, and uh, you speak that way, although there are some supernatural elements where God will help you, and there will be some supernatural flow that we can see, but your vocabulary is still limited. And you need to enlarge it for to express it for. Or maybe a little kid who had received the same prophecy. Say, God say, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Same prophecy, three different people deliver three different descriptions. Because the vocabulary of each one of them is different. Now, when the Holy Spirit wanted to speak, in a sense, He could sometimes supernaturally bypass it. But, in another sense, He is also limited to the vocabulary of the person. The person may take ten words to describe what one doctor of philosophy takes to describe in one word. Like, uh, you know, he say, you know, oh, he, he, the, the person physically, against my will, forced me to do this thing. You could just say, He coerced me. It will include all those descriptions. And uh, so sometimes, uh, as the Holy, Holy Spirit work, yeah, He's limited by our vocabulary, our personality, etc. And by our experience with Him. In a sense, when the audible voice of God is speaking to us, there are all these experiences we have and all these natural knowledge we have you would hear it to a certain extent because our mind associates a new new experience with the old. How do you learn something new? When you learn something new, you associate the new thing with the old things you have learned. For example, if you have never tasted a durian before, how do I tell you about a durian. Have you eaten durian before? You have? Wonderful. <laughs> okay. And if you have not experienced, have you eaten a durian before? Oh, here we go. <laughs> so she has not eaten a durian before. King of all fruits. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, how do I describe the taste of a durian to her? How does she learn that taste? Of course, not by eating is one. But if I were to describe to her, I have to take from her experience. I'll say, you know, it has a sulfury taste. <laughs> it has this, uh, a bit of this Limburger cheese smell. And uh, you mix it with a little bit of socks they haven't washed for two weeks. <laughs> Add butter on it. <laughs> To get a slimy taste, <laughs> right? So, I try to take her experience and put it together to form a new. You see what I mean? Our mind and natural mind works this way. To learn something new, we take about two, three things of the old and form something new. Then that new, new natural thing that we learn becomes added to our knowledge and then we got more things to compare now from then onwards. So we are constantly learning and growing all the time. When we hear the audible voice of God, we, we tend to associate with sounds that we have heard. Suppose that in the night time you hear this voice, this sound. What comes to your mind? Immediately, your mind would straight away go into your computer data, your hard disk down there. 
and pull out some sounds that sound similar. Because our mind works that way, you want to straight away try to associate. Could be a cat with a brick lying on it saying, <laughs> Could be an owl with a sore throat. Say, <laughs> right. Our mind associated with some natural thing straight away. Now, should God speak audibly to you, you may hear it to be a voice of someone familiar. You may hear it to be the natural sounds that are mixed in it. But it's a fresh new voice all by itself. That's the first phenomenon you watch. Yeah, you know this. Samuel thought that it was Eli. That was within his experience. Why does he thought that? Because normally it's Eli who keeps calling for him anyway. Most of the time. Now the second area that we see here is that the reason why Samuel could hear, he didn't just hear the sound like, and he thought that it was a dead, uh, half-dead cat or something. Just turn away and cover himself with a blanket and sleep. He, he, he heard an actual name being called. Samuel! Samuel! <laughs> right? He heard an actual voice speaking to him. And uh, he ran to Eli. So apparently he was in a position where he could hear quite discernibly. Although he could not associate some things. Because of the second reason, it says Samuel continually ministered before the Lord. Now, it's, it's easier to discern God's voice when you're in the midst of doing the will of God. When in John chapter 12, the voice sounded from heaven and said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The rest of them heard say it thundered. But Jesus was hearing the perfect voice because he was in God's will. There were some of the others that his disciples who possibly heard the voice too. Some others have some knowledge of angels and say an angel spoke. You see, how they interpret the voice was their spiritual level and condition. So we see here that Samuel was fully obedient to the level he was, although he was still a small boy. No matter what your spiritual condition, you don't have to be super duper great spiritually and strong to hear all those things. A young Christian can, provided we are right where God wants us to be and faithful. Whether young Christian or old in the Lord, that you are fully obedient as much as you know how, where you are. Samuel was just a little boy and he was faithful as far as he was concerned. Ministering unto the Lord. That's the second condition there. That he met, that he could listen God's voice. The third area here is that in uh, you notice here it says uh, in verse uh, ten. That's the fourth time the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. The audible voice of God will usually, if there is a message for us, and if we are responding it in some way. The audible voice will keep on if there is a response. Samuel did respond, but he responded to the wrong person. I noticed that voice didn't speak anything else. You see, the, is, you remember the two stages of Elijah that we mentioned in 1 Kings 19. He heard a still small voice, and then he went out, then only the voice starts speaking. So he hears some sounds. He couldn't discern it yet. The audible voice of God, when it speaks to us, there will be no, re- no revelation given until you acknowledge your recognition. In other words, it's like a phone ringing and you don't hear anything until you pick up the phone. And it stops ringing, now you hear the voice. Discernibly. So the audible voice of God, when it speaks to us, you won't just suddenly, you know, uh, just get a message until you get a response. Notice that Samuel has to say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. Then only the voice really starts speaking to him. It demands a response. And let me tell you, sometimes some people have heard the audible voice of God and not discern it, and they miss the message. 
That's what this teaching is concerned. Now, of course, you don't respond to every sound. In the middle of the night, you hear the sound. Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. And you hear carefully. Meow! Meow! Indeed. So, uh, you have to descend. And remember, all the spectacular things are confirmed by the inward witness. And every time if God ever spoken in a spectacular way, you will sense a bubbling in your spirit man. You will sense a stirring. And you know there's something. You know there's something. See, how did Elijah discern of all the sounds that are happening in 1 Kings 19? The wind was howling, the rocks were falling, the earth was quaking, and the fires were burning, and a still small voice was sounding. How did he listen? Because there was one sound that created a response in his spiritual perception. You could discern the voice of God, the sound, with your spirit man. Your spirit man. A few times I heard God's audible voice. And sometimes, you know, one time it was in the early morning, or the hours, I was praying, and I was hearing like a voice uh, calling my name. I had to hear carefully two or three times before I, I realized that it was a voice calling me. First I thought it was somebody else. But I realized no, nobody else was awake. See, the mind calculates and does all these things. And it was only when I responded and said, Yes, Lord. Then he knows he's recognized. Then he starts speaking something. We need to respond before we get the rest of the revelation. Praise God. Let's go to God in prayer as we look into this matter. Father, we praise you and we thank you that you continue to teach us your audible voice. You continue to train us, O oh God, so that we could learn to be led by the Spirit sensitive and obedient to the inward voice and also to the audible voice should you so choose to speak unto us. Father, we only want to be obedient. We ask that you teach us, O Lord, to be obedient. That we may glorify Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen.